In the heart of England, near a lovely little village called Harlexton, about a mile off the road to Grantham, lies on a hillside the magnificent Harlexton Manor. The manor was built in the 1830s and has evolved from being a family residence to becoming a Jesuit monastery to finally becoming the home of a modern college. This has been the English campus of the University of Evansville since 1971. Many students and teachers from all over the world have come here and have been enchanted by Harlexton's beauty. Academic study and rewarding personal experiences at this magical place are all part of the Harlexton experience. Students for nearly five decades have explored every corner of this building and its grounds. Almost every corner. There are still secret places yet to be discovered. Beauty surrounds us at Harlexton. As you come down our mile drive, the first thing you see is our majestic manor settled into the hillside. Our gardens and grounds express a vision of loveliness that is incomparable in all of England. I'm Jerry Seaman. Welcome to Harlexton. Let's explore. Standing in front of Harlexton Manor, you see the main entrance. This is where guests are greeted and escorted to the building's interior. The boldness, the strength, the architecture, paintings and sculptures, and the majestic stairs leading up are truly impressive. The first room on this level is the State Dining Room. It has tall cedar walls and decorative ceiling with the many coat of arms of the families connected with Harlexton Manor. Today it is a room for classes and meetings. Hidden in the corner, there is a secret door. You don't see it at first, but when it opens, it leads you into the magnificent Great Hall. This is where theatre, concerts, assemblies, or even casual get-togethers are hosted. Overlooking the Great Hall is the Minstrel's Gallery, with only secret access. Of course, aspiring music students love this room. As a vocal music major and mezzo-soprano, I have a special appreciation for this two-story Elizabethan Great Hall and its proper minstrels gallery. Not only for its outstanding acoustics, but also for the attention to beauty and history embedded in its creation and renovation. The imposing marble floor displays crosses from the Gregory Coat of Arms, and the Belgian crystal chandelier is breathtaking. The architectural acoustics and that distinguished environment have an inspiring effect on a musician, often compelling one to perform and always encouraging one's best. On the same floor, there are further rooms that have been renovated extensively. This is the morning room, which is used today as a classroom.
It is indeed a challenge to concentrate on the lecture and not to gaze out of the window. But upon doing so, you view the fabulous garden of Harlexton Manor, including the Lion's Terrace. This has gone through some heavy renovation in recent years. Behind this small door is another secret place. The restoration of this hidden basement became quite a challenge. The whole banking was, um, was absolutely soaking. It's, uh, we had uh, God knows how much they spent on work on restoring the line terrace. When they, they did it, we had to go in and uh, kind of dig his way in. It's awful in there. It is indeed damp and dirty down here. The ceiling is very low. There is no standing upright, so it's hard to move about in here. Under the terrace, there is a great stone tank, which is almost impossible to access, that collects rainwater. During the renovation, work had to be stopped because great crested newts were found nesting here. They are quite rare. This put a halt on the construction until the newts were finished nesting and had moved on. Once out of that messy basement, we turn and take in more of the manor's gorgeous grounds. In this corner is the Italian garden, a place for a treat with a wonderful view of the Lincolnshire countryside. As with many places on the Harlexton grounds, this is a place of seclusion and beauty, a welcome comfort for students far from home. From here, one can also see the conservatory, a further place of peace and solitude, which was also off bounds in the 1970s due to safety. Today, it is one of the most aesthetic places in the manor, a welcome alternative to stress and academic pressure. Backing out of this beautiful oasis, we find ourselves in the Long Gallery. This is also a place for speeches, concerts and lectures, and it used to hold formal banquets or receptions. This room has been renovated completely, including the great ceiling. Back in the corner, there is a secret door. It's quite hard to find, but behind it, there is a hidden spiral staircase.
of the fun things about living at Harlexton is we have lots of stairs. Not all of them lead nowhere. Some of them lead to other stairs. We also have one of the most magnificent staircases in all of England, the Cedar Staircase. It is truly extraordinary. This staircase is a masterpiece of beauty in the heart of Harlexton Manor. Going from the main level to the very top of the building, it offers an awesome impression of how tall this building is. Up at the top, you see this beautiful sky, a portal to heaven. But as you can see, it's not authentic. And this is how it looks at the top. This is truly high and is indeed quite spectacular. Although the skies are only paintings, natural light pours through the windows. There have been some changes done since the original times, such as the planks for better access, the electricity, and fire detectors. Even here, rainwater is collected and maintained for a fire emergency. From up here, it seems very far down and just a little treacherous. For many years now, no one has been allowed to come up here. Indeed, a secret place. Upon the roof, we can see over the beautiful English countryside. And from here, we can see the carriage house, just over to the side of the manor. This is where the original owners of Harlexton Manor kept their horses. Today, this building is used for dormitory facilities. Below these rooms is an out-of-bounds area, another secret place. Uh, well, now we're underneath the carriage house. Um, we do know that this half of it, they used to have horses. I don't know if you can see, but there's, there's hooks in the walls where they used to tie the horses up. They would have originally would have been led out, come up the top of the carriage house, where the carriages were stored. They would have been hooked up to the carriage and then up, back up to the manor to the pick up whoever it was that was taken and up the drive and gone. There are no more horses to be seen here, just a few vehicles. Some of these corners are used for storage, but could still use a bit of cleaning up. There are again several large water tanks for firefighting purposes. Students are not allowed in here at all. Going back to the front courtyard, we see a second entrance. This is the usual way students, faculty and staff access the building. Going through the entrance area, we come to the stone corridor. Down here is the bistro, a room where students and faculty can meet talk, watch a film, or get a pint. Next to the bar, which is now closed, there is a door that leads to a secret passage. This is where the monks used to stay down here. They had candles so they could see. It's one of them that's still there that they didn't realise was still there anymore. And obviously they blocked it off with the stairs. And there was all the old toilets and things are all down here. Over here we found another hole that was bricked up that we've knocked down. We found the old water tanks behind it. There's about 28,000 litres of water if there's been an emergency. We can uh, put a fire out quickly before the fire brigade get here. There have been several Hollywood films made at Harlexton, including The Haunting, 
some of the props, such as the imitation gravestones, are still down here. This passage leads to the Pegasus courtyard in the back of the manor. Back to the level floor of the stone corridor, there is a hallway leading to the college's library. It's been in this current location since the 1980s. Before that, it was the gym for the college and before that it was the original kitchen for the manor. The upper level was put in to create more space for books. This room is quite high in order to let in ample light. The upper level goes into another room, which used to be student accommodation. There are about 20,000 books here. I always get a little group of kind of students that really love the library and this is where they hang out, this is their space um, and they become my kind of friends. If this was originally a kitchen, how did the owners back then get coal? food and supplies into the manor. Well, there was a tunnel with a small gauge train track in it that went back to the village. A small door lets us sneak in to take a peek at this hidden tunnel. For years, this was closed up, hardly accessible and very secret. Within the tunnel, there are several chutes dropping down into various areas like the boiler room. Uh, this is where they all brought all the materials in from on the outside. They would bring them all down here straight into this level and do all the work that we're doing and also the coal. Coal is in different chutes for different areas. The boiler house is directly below, I think it's that chute there, which is where it would have literally dropped it all in and carried everything from there, straight up to the kitchens and things. The doors to the tunnels still have to be kept locked because, among other animals, bats live here. Bats are a protected species. Sometimes owls live here as well, and during the mating season, they should not be disturbed. Another reason is simply the danger of falling through the floor or the chutes. It's a big drop. to the entrance area, one of the first things you see is an old lift, one of the few lifts in England of this nature. It goes from the very bottom of Harlexton Manor almost to the top. It's not very fast. Sometimes walking the steps is actually faster. I was originally assigned to a room that was a cubicle. It had a bed, a dresser, a braided oval rug, a horsehair mattress, and one bare light bulb that stuck out of the wall. And there's a staircase that goes into where this cubicle was, and then a staircases that go up two more floors to my rooms. Someone else had been assigned to it originally. She didn't like it, moved out, and I moved in. It was so cool. It had paintings on the walls, psychedelic circus, blue and pink elephant, giraffe, lion, and that morphed into a psychedelic jungle. It was absolutely beautiful. And a window that sat right at the floor level so I could sit in that window and watch out over Grantham, watch the glider club made up of retired RAF pilots flying over Grantham. It was just the coolest place. About the only thing I did to add to it was to put up some posters, a Neil Young and a Crosby, Stills and Nash, and, and of course that Guinness poster, everybody had to have one of those. And I brought a comforter from home that my grandparents had made for me. It was just a little bit of home that made that bed my bed. It was a little distressing to see it 38 years later, to see that the paintings had been all covered over, the uh, faux linoleum, uh, hardwood floor had been covered and carpeted. 
but it was still my, in a way, my space. Taking the lift back down, we stop at the level above the staterooms, the Great Hall and the Long Gallery. This is the Blue Corridor. Off this are nowadays rooms for guests and faculty. Around a hidden corner is a passage to the Senior Common Room, sometimes called the Van der Elst Room. This used to be a library, which students could access. It is now only to be used by faculty and staff. This is the room where Mrs van der Elst kept the lead-lined coffin of her husband, where she would hold the seances to try and contact him. I don't think she ever got through to him. Uh, not long after that, when he was cremated, uh, they were selling things to uh, try and she was trying to raise money and uh, his ashes were sold by accident in a giant urn and it, quite a bit of uh, hassle but they managed to get him back for her. I don't believe anybody's ever seen any ghosts in here but there's often talk if he's going to be haunted it's going to be here. The Blue Corridor also leads to one of the most unique secret places in the manor. After going up very narrow stairs, there is a little room that holds the mechanics of the manor's great clock, including wheels, pulleys, gears, a pendulum, and weights. This clock is one of the last of its kind. After a complete renovation, the daily cranking up of the clock weights may no longer be heard, but the clock bells continue to strike on time as ever. In the early 70s, the clock tower was off limits to students, a forbidden space, just as was the conservatory and the gatehouse. And yet, the black and gold clock face was the focal point of the manor's majestic exterior. From ground level, it nestled between the Stars and Stripes and the Union Jack. The tenor ring of the chime was an ever audible reminder of the robust life within the manor. But in 2007, after almost 150 years of steadfast service, no time, no chime. Members and friends from the first class of 1971 took up a collection to restore the clock. To celebrate this successful fundraiser, Principal Gordon Kingsley led the donors on a virtual tour of the newly renovated space dedicated as the Founders Class Clock Tower. Reflective space showcasing the clock's working mechanism of wheels and weights, levers and gears, and swinging pendulum. Once again, the dependable chiming of the manor clock provides a familiar rhythm to all who hear it. From the clock room, there is a ladder for continuing our journey up even higher. This is definitely out of bounds. When the first class started at Harlaxton, not all rules had been made yet. One day, the bazaar took several of us students up to the bell tower. We went up very shaky ladders, avoiding spider webs and trying not to step into any pigeon droppings. Along the walls were wires and pulleys that were magically moved by the clockwork below us. These eventually led to the ringing of the bells in the tower above us.
Upon reaching the top, we were greeted by Harleckson's great bells. But the fascination of this moment was the majestic view of a fine English countryside, which was simply smashing. Going up there years later was still quite an adventure. Harlexton Manor stands for beauty and academic studies, achievement. It is also the place for true adventurers. Being here as a student, a member of the faculty, or even just as a visitor, it is certainly a once-in-a-lifetime experience. A lot has changed since the first class of the University of Evansville arrived here in the autumn of 1971, almost 50 years ago but there are still many exciting and hidden things at Harlexton just waiting to be discovered. There are still many secret places. <laughs>